So how can one of the biggest brands in the world get this so wrong? How can they get this so wrong? If they can get it wrong, we can get it wrong. And it really boils down to one key thing. Microsoft forgot one key thing. No one gives a shit. No one gives a shit about you, your brand, your product, your service. No one goes on Instagram, on social media to consume content about you. They go on there to be educated, entertained, inspired. They go on there to consume content from their favorite influencers, connect with friends, connect with family. How dare Microsoft have the audacity to think that you care that much about their product, that you actually have a house party revolved around their product? It sounds ridiculous just saying it, doesn't it? <laughs> they actually did that. <laughs> So despite that, there is some types of advertising, some types of marketing that we actually look forward to consuming. We actually get excited to watch these types of marketing and advertising, just like our favorite Netflix show. So I'm going to put the question to you guys. What types of marketing and advertising do you actually look forward to consuming? Any, any ideas? Just shout some out. Sorry? Sorry? Budweiser, okay. He's a drinker. Any others? Okay, you're a bit shy. I'll tell you what, I'll make your life easier. I'll just show you the examples I've got. Yeah? Okay, so the first example, Super Bowl ads. Who here gets more excited to watch the Super Bowl ads than the Super Bowl itself? Yeah? I don't, still don't know what the Super Bowl is, but I love the Super Bowl ads. Why? Why do we like watching Super Bowl ads? Well, the National Retail Federation carried out some research that starts to provide the first piece of the puzzle to show us why this is. So they surveyed 7,227 people who watched the Super Bowl in 2018. And they found out something really interesting. They found out that 80% of people class the Super Bowl ads as entertainment. Let that sink in for a second. 80% of people are classing Super Bowl ads, something that's purely focused around selling them a product or service, in the same category as their favorite Netflix show. That's mental. Let's look at another example, Christmas ads. So I don't know how popular Christmas ads are here in Romania, but back in the UK, we wait all year with anticipation to see Christmas ads from our favorite brands like John Lewis, Marks and Spencers, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Audi. And within these ads, they communicate magical stories based around Christmas that remind us of our childhood, remind us they're very nostalgic, right? And we wait all year with anticipation for these ads. And brands are pumping huge, like mental amounts of money into these campaigns. So in the last quarter of 2018, brands pumped 6.4 billion pounds into advertising in the last quarter. And that's been steadily growing since 2010. This is a clear sign that this type of advertising is working. Again, why? Why is that? And the reason that as consumers we love this type of advertising, it hits us there. It makes us feel something. It makes us feel happy, it makes us feel sad, it makes us cry, it makes us go, ah. Oh. When we feel something, it triggers us to take action. As humans, we're emotional beings, and it makes us feel something. And this is backed up by tons of research. The Advertising Association did some research that found out that 47% of people admit to crying at a Christmas ad. Come on, who's cried at a Christmas ad? Yeah, me too. I mean, I wouldn't admit to this next one. 16% of people actually stated that they changed their social plans to watch the premiere of a Christmas ad in the UK. That's sad. People are actually changing their social activities to watch Christmas ads. I wouldn't admit to that. Let's look at a final example now, a type of advertising that we actually look forward to consuming. Hashtag ad influencer content. Content from our favorite influencers. We love consuming content from our favorite sports, makeup, fashion, marketing influencers, right? And that's reflected in the rise of influencer marketing. Influencer marketing is growing. 
When you hear that brands like Estee Lauder have just announced they're going to be pumping 75%, 75% of their marketing budget into influencer marketing, that is a clue. That is huge, guys. When big brands like that are making monumental shifts like this with how they're spending their marketing budget, we need to take note. And this is also reflected in the research that NeoReach did. They did research on 2,000 influencer marketing campaigns last year and found that for every dollar spent, brands are receiving $5 return in earned media. This stuff is working, guys. It's working. Why? Why is this working? Why do we buy stuff when an influencer talks about it? And it's for a number of reasons. The first reason is trust. Just like you'll listen to your mum, your nan, your friend, your brother, your sister, if they recommend a product, influencers is the same thing on a mass scale. They've built up audiences of hundreds, thousands, millions of people who listen to their every word, and it's based around trust. There's one more interesting reason as to why we like this advertising. Even if it's an advert, a hashtag ad, we like it because it doesn't look like an ad. Right? And this raises an ethical question. If something doesn't look like an ad and an influencer is promoting it, how ethical is that? And the ASA just released some research, literally September, that said that um, most people still can't tell the difference between an ad and not an ad based on what an influencer is posting. So this is scary stuff, guys. And there's, there's lots of ethical questions around this, but as marketers, we need to take note. People don't like ads that look like ads, right? People don't like ads that look like ads. This is why influencer marketing works so well. And to summarize these key principles around the types of advertising we actually look forward to, like our favorite Netflix show, they need to be entertaining. They need to trigger our emotions. They need to be fun to consume, and they need to not look like ads. This is the first key principles we need to note down when developing your marketing and advertising campaigns. And the way we like to summarize this is advertainment. Entertaining advertising. Now, I have to be honest, I didn't make that term up. I found it on the internet and copied it. But <laughs> the way we like to describe advertainment is producing advertising that focuses on your consumer first and your brand's KPI second. Consumer first, brand's KPI second. And to provide you some context, I want to share one of my favorite examples with you now. So who's heard of an online publication called Unilad? Anyone? Oh, nice. So quick backstory, because this is pretty cool. I get excited by this stuff. So Unilad was a Facebook page started by two friends back in 2010, two university friends. And they described the page as something to watch whilst you're bored in the university library, right? Has anyone gone to university? You know when you go in the library and pretend to do work, but really you just watch videos? This page was built for you, right? So they produced this entertaining content. It was all about university culture and laddish culture, okay? Laddish culture is like when you go for beers with the lads. We Do you have that here or not? Yes, okay. I don't know why I did that. But <laughs> they started this page. By 2016, they had 17 million likes on Unilad. And you can imagine, when you've got that much exposure, brands come knocking at the door, right? They actually got bought out by another publication. Fun fact for you. They got bought out by another publication last year called Lad Bible, which is one of their rivals, which is now the biggest social video publication in the world with 120 million followers worldwide reaching 2.7 billion people a month, one after BuzzFeed's tasty Facebook page, which is crazy. But back to this. So Unilad, when they started to build this audience, they started to team up with brands to produce content. One of the brands they teamed up with was an app called Badoo. Who's heard of Badoo? OK, it's kind of like Tinder. Who's heard of Tinder? Who uses Tinder? Yes, I see you guys. <laughs> 